<laughs> uh, but each year I've asked a few lay leaders to come and speak and share a few words. And this year, for pretty obvious reasons, I asked that each speaker be someone who had a specific experience in some way with Israel. Uh, Wendy Paradise, who besides having the funnest name in the congregation, uh, told me she went on a mission because she felt like she just had to be there. I certainly understand the feeling and laud her, uh, her visit to Israel and her uh, efforts at trying to make our homeland whole. I'll ask her now to come please share a few words. I'm going to ask, I know that we all love each other so much, but for the lay people in specific, it's a big swing for them to come up and speak in front of this many, not Wendy, who's not nervous at all, but other people occasionally are nervous. So I'm going to ask everyone, really, whatever you have to say, just hold it for a few minutes and hear what Wendy has to say. Shana Tova. As we gather today, I want to share an experience that changed how I see resilience, faith, and the strength of the human spirit. After the tragic events of October 7th, I felt a strong and immediate need to be in Israel, to stand at the wall and pray. The urge to connect with Israel and its people was overwhelming. In December, I found my way by joining a mission departing in January through Sheba Medical Center. When I arrived in Israel, day 97, I was filled with a deep sense of connection and purpose. The people of Israel were incredibly grateful. They thanked me as if I had done something as significant as donating a kidney. It was both humbling and moving. With so few tourists around at the time, our group stood out, and our presence felt even more meaningful, as if being there brought comfort and strength to those we met. One of the most surreal experiences of this journey was witnessing what had happened at Kfar Aza. Standing there, I felt the heavy weight of history and the pain of recent events, but also the resilience of those who continue to live and rebuild. It was almost too much to take in, but it made me understand even more how Israel always finds the strength to survive and move forward, no matter what. Another powerful moment was visiting the Western Wall. When I placed my note into the cracks of the wall, I could feel the incredible strength that Israel has, strength that has been built over thousands of years, enduring hardships, but always rising, always moving forward. During the Sheba mission, I had the honor of meeting some of the released hostages and injured IDF soldiers at Sheba Medical Center. One young soldier I met, Aaron, a lone soldier from Long Island, really stayed with me. He's been through so much, many surgeries, countless challenges, but what impressed me most was not just his resilience, but his spirit. Despite everything, he's determined to recover, serve his country, and live his life to the fullest. His story is a true example of the unbreakable spirit of Israel and its people. Finally, my time in Israel reminded me why this place is truly special. Israel is not just a country. It's a beacon of hope where miracles happen every day and where the impossible becomes possible. Whether it's the advanced medical care at Chiba Medical Center, the spiritual energy at the Kotel, or the courage of young soldiers like the one I met, Israel is a unique blend of ancient wisdom and modern innovation of determination and compassion. As we enter this new year, Let's carry with us the lessons of resilience and faith that Israel teaches us. Let's remember the power of connection to our heritage, to our people, and to each other. And let's be inspired to face our own challenges with the same strength and spirit I witnessed in Israel. We must bring the remaining hostages home, and may we all be inscribed for a year of health, happiness, and peace. Shana Tova. Roughly once a week since I asked Wendy to speak, she told me, actually, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> she said, what do my words mean? What do I have to add? And I think we can all agree that one of the many things she adds is a reminder that our love 
for our people, for our country does not have to stay inside this room. You don't have to be a rabbi. You can just be a person we can visit, we can support, we can keep Israel in our hearts and minds throughout our days. Wendy, thank you for sharing your story.